Well, it's that time again. It's been four years. Election year, it's here. We have our two big dog contenders. In this corner, we have the champion, Donald Trump. In the next corner, we have the number one contender, who is Joe Biden. Now, we all talk about Donald Trump and Apple. So let's focus on this upcoming rising star, Joe, um, Joe, um, Biden. Biden, that's right. I remember now. So, it's kind of crazy to see him in there. You know, he's a career politician, been around for a very, very long time. Um, personally, the HIM, and maybe with how long I've been paying attention to politics, first time I remember hearing his name is when he ran against Obama in the Democrat primaries and lost, and then he uh, went on to become his vice president. Now, we're going to backtrack a little bit about how Joe Biden became the number one contender. Four years ago, Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump to see who would take home the championship, the presidential title. Well, Trump won. But before that happened, everyone was saying, well, Trump's mental stability, it, it isn't right. He needs to take a test. He needs to be evaluated. He was evaluated. He claims it came back perfect. That's not the point. The point here is that four years ago, the Democrats were, um, they were really preaching incompetence. Uh, they didn't think Donald Trump was physically fit. Um, sorry, mentally fit to be president. This was before people really even truly started hating him. They're just like, he's an old guy. You know, we don't want him. And they didn't want Bernie Sanders because of his radical views, but they also made a point that he was very old. So Donald Trump runs the race, despite that. So four years later, what the Democrats do? They get the oldest guy they possibly can. The oldest white guy they possibly can. And they put him up on the grand stage. And not only do they do that, it's very obvious that Uncle Joe has some memory issues at, at the very least. I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to be, but I have worked with people with dementia and he's start, um, starting to show signs of mild cases of dementia, in my opinion. You're welcome to yours. Yeah, he's always been a gaff machine, so they say. Go back and look at the vice presidential debates back in, um, what was it, 2008. The guy was sharp as a tack, dead on. I mean, if that Joe was running today, I'd be worried. I'd be concerned. Maybe he was a gaff machine, and those were honest gaffs back then. But the man knew what he was talking about. He knew where he was. And they dress him up, and he looks good for, for video. He really does. But the moment someone takes a picture of him, you just see how old he is when he walks off the stage and he walks back. Just look at him. And I'm not trying. I'm Honestly, I'm not trying to make fun of the man. I know it seems that I am. Uh, I'm not trying to make fun of the man for things that he can't help. Like his age. Um, the dementia, I mean, he just lays it on thick. There's there's too much there to not to not work with, to avoid. Corn Pop was a bad dude. Um, poor kids are just as smart as white kids. Uh, you're not black, man. Or dog, whatever it is he used. Anyways, I digress. You get the point. It's Joe Biden is not going to unite this country. And that's the message they're running on. They're running on two messages. And they both pretty much are the same one. It's we need to replace Donald Trump. And we, un re we need to reunite the country. So what do they think is going to happen with all these people that like Trump and support Trump and believe he's doing a good job if he gets uh, loses the election? Biden's going to come in here and they're just all of a sudden going to fall in love with Joe Biden. They're just going to be like, oh, we listen to the Democrats complain four years. We're, we're sure not going to do that. I think we better give Joe a chance. And this Kamala Harris girl, yeah, I could get behind her. California's a beautiful place. I wish I lived in California. 
And that's where she's from. Look at look at all the wonderful things happen there. You know, I'm sure there are some nice parts of California, but she's not from one of them. Or well, she might be, but her constituents aren't. So I don't get it. You know, we all look at Donald Trump, and we form our opinions, and they're so far apart. It's crazy to think that. There's so much hatred for our president, but at the same time, there's so much uh, respect and love. When was the last time you remember anyone defending their president this much? Or, let's flip it around, the last time we remember anyone attacking a president this much? Guys, we are very, very divided, and I'm not trying to make this a left versus right thing. My endorsements obviously goes to Donald Trump. I'm a conservative. But the issues that we have in this country are far more bigger. Somebody wants us divided. Somebody doesn't want us to um, get along. They want us to fight. They want us to argue. Uh, protesting. People are like, oh, well, protesting. They have to protest to get their point across. Do you guys realize um, our issues in the United States have declined they've gotten worse from all this protesting you know things aren't getting better how are we going to make things better we got a very simple solution and honestly it's a plan that any candidate should and could run on they don't but we're going to talk to each other sit down and have a conversation don't shove your facts in my face i'm not going to shove my facts in your face i don't care about your freaking facts Give me your thoughts. Give me your original, God-honest thoughts. Not somebody else's. Not what somebody else believes, what somebody else did. Give me yours. I want to hear how you feel. Not about people. Not about presidents. Not about candidates. Not about celebrities. I want to know how you as a person feel this country can be united. So, go ahead. Comment below. I look forward to reading it. Um... I know this is a long video. I hope you guys stuck around to the end. And if you did, thanks a lot. All right. Take care.